Welcome. Um, I, that spiritual gifts class, uh, I talked to somebody also who went through that, and this, this other person was somebody who'd been walking with the Lord for a long time, a lot of years, a little more seasoned, if you will, than those three beautiful young folks, um, and I appreciate them and their heart in this, but this was, this was a gal who'd been walking with Jesus, I'd say, the majority of her life, and, and an older gal, and, and she just told me personally um, what that class meant to her, and she also felt similar, that she kind of knew what her gift was, but what she discovered was how her gift integrated into the body, and how not only was her gift for her and for the body, but how her gift was designed to work together with others and their gifts within the body. And she said it radically changed how she saw her gift, and, and even gifts. And, and so I want to encourage you, that this class that's coming up starting this Tuesday, I think is a life changer for a lot of people. Uh, you know, maybe we've taken a spiritual gift as was said, a spiritual gift inventory, or we've thought we've known, or we've been operating within our spiritual gifting. Um, but this class really changes it. It takes it to a level that I believe is deeper, and, and it helps you to integrate within the context of the body of Christ, using your gift within the body to build up the body, which is why we have the gifts. And of course, we know that the more we use our gifts, the more joy, the more fruitfulness, the more our life will be what God designed it to be. So, so anyway, let me also encourage you on this class, um, this starting this Tuesday, is that correct? Okay, Tuesday, 6 o'clock, and there's going to be five sessions. If you can, sign up or let Pastor Tom or Mark, um, Pastor Mark, know that, that you're interested in this class. Um, otherwise, just show up, okay? If the Lord stirs it up in your heart to say, you know, that might be a good thing for you this year, 2016, to know a little bit more, invest. Certainly, it's an investment of time. Uh, and, and so, if the Lord even just works in you in these next couple of days, feel free to just show up, come here 6 o'clock, and they'll get you connected in. Uh, pretty convinced that this, is, this could be a life changer for a lot of us. And, and the more we operate and work and live and understand how God has created us and these spiritual gifts that he has really blessed us with. The spiritual gifts are a grace from God, a gift. Uh, that's why they call it a gift. It's something that God has given, a blessing. And the more we understand those, live within those, walk within those, uh, I think the more fruitful our life will be. And ultimately, that's our goal, is to bear fruit for his kingdom. Amen? Yeah. So anyway, just, just a little encouragement for the spiritual gifts class. Um, Happy New Year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, 2016, wow. As, as Mark said, sometimes, man, I can, I can look back and think back to some years gone by. And, and when I was young, 2016, man, what's that going to be like? And, you know, I don't know if for you, but the new year does fill me with a sense of hopefulness. It just does. It feels like a new beginning. It feels like a fresh, there's something fresh and new and like, all of the stuff that I wish I hadn't done in 2015, I can just sort of, I can just sort of say that was 2015, and there's a freshness to it. Um, and I hope that it's that for you. I hope today there's this, there's a new level of life and excitement for what is ahead. And I think a new year can do that. At the same time, for me, I know a new year causes me to reflect back. It causes me to think back on both the good and the bad from the last year. And I think that's appropriate. I think, you know, a big part of our Christian faith and our walk is remembering, isn't it? I mean, that's what we're going to do today. In, in just a few minutes, we're going to remember what Christ did. Do this, do this, remembering his sacrifice in remembrance. We do this in remembrance of him. And so remembering and thinking back is is not a bad thing. And so I, you know, over the last week or two, I guess I wasn't here last Sunday morning. Mark B, Pastor Mark, thanks for preaching last Sunday morning. It was, uh, from what I heard, it was, it, was a, it was a very good and needed message. So thank you. Thank you, Mark, very much. So I guess over the last couple of weeks, I've reflected back on the last year. And 
I remember a year ago, this first service on Sunday morning a year ago, I preached a message on Peter. And Peter stepping out of the boat. And I made some crazy antics of like what it would have been like to walk on water. And that became our theme for the year. Our theme for 2015 was to step what? Out. Step out. And, and we challenged people. And it, it was... It was kind of exciting at the beginning, and I remember saying multiple times in the beginning of last year, I'm more excited about this year than I have been maybe about any year in the history of my time here at Bayside. And so I was very optimistic, and I was excited about 2015, and uh, we stepped out. And I think in a variety of ways, we as a congregation, as a body, we did that. We stepped, we stepped out of the boat. Um, my wife and I were talking about this because we feel like also as a family we stepped out in some significant ways and just probably this, within this last week we were walking and talking and, and my wife said, so, you know, this stepping out, this has been kind of tough. Um, <laughs> this has been a challenge and she said, you're not going to have the same theme again next year. <laughs> can, can we have, can, can the theme be like stay in the boat? Can, can we tell all the good reasons why staying in the boat and safe is really good? Can, can you do that? Um, I said, no, I don't think so. You know, stepping out, um, there, there, there's some wonderful parts to it. And I think as we sat a year ago and, and as I sat and thought, we're going to step out this year, I was filled with excitement. And at the same time, as we went through this year, there were more moments than I would appreciate where I felt like Peter, when he took a look at the waves and he took a look at the wind and he realized that he was sinking and he needed Jesus. And I feel like, I know for me personally, uh, there were plenty of moments when I felt like that Peter, as much as the Peter who was walking, probably excited to walk. You know, as a, as a church body, stepping out meant a lot for us this year. We stepped out in a variety of ways. Maybe one of the most significant is the new ministry that we started in Duluth called Bayside on the Hill. And probably about 50 of us um, were and are significantly committed to that ministry in the Central Hillside. We had our first Saturday night service there last night. Uh, and, and I think that was a step out for many of us. I think as a church body, we stepped out in that way. I know for me personally, that was a and is uh, quite a step out moment. And I think for a lot of us, that was a significant aspect of what it meant for us to step out this year. Um, we had some missions trips that many of us participated in. There's some individuals that went on missions trips. And then we had a larger missions trip to Chicago. Pastor Thomas, how many did we take? 20 students and adults, right? And went and served in the inner city of Chicago with Pastor Tom Kennington, my former pastor and guy who does that really significant ministry. He and his, uh, his group were here, and then we went down and visited them. That was a step out for a lot of us, in, both for us and then for some parents who let their children go into the inner city of Chicago. And, and I know for me, I was only there for a couple of the days, but that was a step out moment as well. That's not the safest in many ways uh, area that we have and that place that we stepped out into. You know, and so I know there were many missions trips. I know there were people who stepped out into baptism. You know, we had, I think, as far as I can remember, more baptisms in 2015 than I think we've had since I've been here. We had, looks like, around 30, perhaps even more than 30 people who stepped out and followed Christ in baptism um, this year. We had salvations that, and, and, and one ex particular experience, Mark, Mark B. and I were just talking about this before this morning. In September, we had um, and, and four Four people who just directly came to us and told us they confessed Jesus, put their faith in Jesus for the first time. And so in a month, we had four individuals that said, I trusted in Jesus for the first time. And, and I just think, I, that's a praise the Lord. We, I mean, <laughs> angels get excited about that. I guess we can too. Um, you know, I think we had salvations. Uh, we had baptisms. We had people stepping out. 
You know, I saw unselfishness this year amongst our body that I have not seen before. I saw people giving of themselves in ways related to this idea of stepping out in ways that I have, I have never seen before. So it, there was a lot of things that I really rejoiced in. I experienced some unity in, a, in certain ways it, within the body that I haven't experienced before here at Bayside. And so I think 2015 was a good year. At the same time, and I think, again, we do have a lot to rejoice over, but at the same time, this was one of the most stretching and difficult years in my life. And I think for us, if we're honest, this was a difficult year for us also. I think in many ways, uh, we struggled at, at times with who we are. You know, um, as much unity as I felt, I also felt a sense of questioning who are we? Who really are we? here at Bayside. You know, we have we had a lot of new people that came this year and we're so thankful for those new folks that came to be a part of our body and integrating in. And at the same time, we lost a lot of people for a variety of reasons in, in 2015. And, and I think, you know, we're also struggling to understand who really are we at Bayside. We have now this new ministry. We have new folks that we love and are excited to get to know. But we lost some folks as well. And I think at the same time that I felt as much unity as I've ever felt, I've also felt like, boy, I don't know how unified we are. And, and so as I sit here, I have as many questions at the beginning of 2016 as I do answers. You know, stepping out can do that. Stepping out can cause us to wonder, it can cause us to become uncertain. And I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know that I like that. <laughs> part of stepping out, I'm not so convinced that that's the part that feels good. Don't we like when life is secure? Don't we like when we know what we are to do? Don't, don't we like when everything is just good news? And don't, don't we like when we have a solid, okay, Here's our direction. You know, when life presents us with questions and it gets unstable, it's tough. And when we step out, I think that causes those type of things. You know, we had some wonderful, cool building things that happened this year. We painted the outside of the building and it needed a good painting. It was boring. Can I get an amen? No, nah, it was okay. <laughs> we got some new sound and lights. And those things that are wonderful and that are blessings and that I think are going to be helpful and, wonder and, and beneficial at the same time can cause some anxiety, can't they? Because not everybody agrees. Not everybody likes. Not everybody appreciates. Not everybody thinks the same. Can I get an amen on that? Can we just be honest for a minute? We don't all think the same on what we like or what we want. And so at the same time, that I feel this great sense of hopefulness and Lord, you're taking us somewhere. You are leading us, Lord. At the same time, I feel like now I'm on the waves and I don't know so much and it doesn't feel so stable. And if I just sat up here and I told you that, that oh, here's exactly where we're going and here's all of the answers and here's, I don't think it'd be honest. And I don't think life is like that. And so if we pretend at times that church life is going to be, and we have all of the answers. Now we have the answer, but if we said we have all of the answers, I think we'd be just sort of saying what maybe we want to hear. Because life is the combination, and I think 2015 was this. Life is the combination of, boy, do I have a lot to give God thanks for. Boy, do I have reason to praise him and worship him. And man, can I look back and rejoice because of all that the Lord has done. 
And I think at the same time, in the same breath, in the same sentence, we have to say, oh God, do I have reason to need you. Oh God, do I have reason to desperately need to reach out my hand to you because it feels like I'm in the middle of the waves right now. And I think that's life. And I think that was 2015. Man, do I think we have a reason to praise him and thank him. And do I see some incredible things, some incredible things that the Lord did this last year. Unique, very, very unique. I think we will look back upon 2015 and we will think, praise you, Lord, for the deep and the spiritual things that you did this year in us, through us, around us. At the same time, I think we come out of 2015 into 2016, and if we're honest, and if I'm honest, I think we need Jesus more than we've ever needed him as a church body. Ever. Because I think we're on the waves, my brothers and sisters and my friends. I think we're on the waves. Do I think that's a good place to be? Yeah. Do I think it's a scary place to be? Yeah, I do. You know, we've had some people step out in some very unique ways this year. We've had some, some folks that have stepped into the world of adoption. Wow, what a thought. We've had some new births. We've also had some deaths. We've had some people who have absolutely lived the gospel in humility and I've seen humility on display this year. And at the same time, to be honest with you, I've identified pride in my life and I've seen it in Bayside at times as well. Do You see what life is? Life is about a great reason and I think 2015 was a great reason to praise the Lord. Boy, I have reason to praise him and I hope you do too. What a good year this was. And at the same time, I don't know that I've ever walked into a year and felt like, oh, Jesus, I need you. And so if there's anything that I wish for 2016, I want more Jesus. <laughs> Nothing. I want more Jesus. I need more Jesus. Jesus. I don't care about a theme. <laughs> I don't care about much. I want more Jesus in 2016. I want more Jesus for us. I want more Jesus for this community. I want more Jesus for me. I want to seek Jesus more in 2016. I want to pursue Jesus more. I want to be intimately involved in Jesus as the Word. Remember John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word. I want more of the Word in 2016, because Jesus is the Word, and the Word is living and active. I want more Jesus reflected in me to you. I want more humility of Jesus in my life in 2016. I want less pride in 2016. I want less Mark in 2016. I want less you in 2016. I want more Jesus. More Jesus. Less me. I want less themes, I want less programs, I want less plans, there's nothing wrong with programs and plans. I want more Jesus. I need more Jesus. We need more Jesus. If there's one thing in 2016 that we need more of, it is Christ. I don't wanna complicate it, I don't wanna convolute it, I couldn't sleep last night. I had a whole nother sermon planned. It was a good one. You might get it someday. <laughs> I'm not joking. 
And I think the Lord was saying, stop making things so complicated. It's about Jesus. End of story. Your life, my life, our life, Bayside, where we are going, what we are doing is not about your life, my life, or Bayside. It's about Jesus. It's about Christ. It's about who he is. It's about what he did. It is all 100% him. And when I begin to see my life as all about Christ, all of a sudden my life will start to, it, it'll start to make sense to me. The world will become different to me. Life will become different to me. My struggles will become different to me. My joys will become different. My family will become different. The fellowship that I have, the love that I have, the selflessness that I display, the humility that is in me and that is in us, when I just simply say, I want more Jesus, it will change 2016. Where are we at? I think we're like Peter who's sitting on the waves and then when we look at the waves, we're like, oh my word. <laughs> Jesus, I need you. All I want for 2016 is more Jesus. That's it. I want it to be really, really simple. Really simple. Not easy, but simple. Simple. I want to immerse myself into the word, into Jesus as the word like I haven't. I want to seek Christ personally, relationally. I don't have a lot of verses this morning at all because I started doing this at 2 a.m. <laughs> but here's one good one. Here's a really good one. 1 Corinthians Two, two. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hear what Paul is saying? I decided. That is a word of determination. I have determined. I have set my course. I have decided to know. That word know means to have thought and intent, to stare at, to look at, to be consumed with. I have determined that I am going to be consumed with nothing except Jesus and him crucified. I want more Jesus. Let's say this together. For I decided... Hold on. You're not talking loud enough. <laughs> if this is what you want, if you want more Jesus, if you want more Jesus, then let's say this like we mean it. Let, 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 let's repeat this verse like it is our mantra for 2016. Let's pretend like we're not in church. <laughs> let's pretend like we're really excited about this. Now let's not pretend. If you want more Jesus, please tell me amen. amen. Let's read this then like that. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh, amen. That's all I want. That's it. I want church to get less about a lot of things that church is about, and I want it to get more about Jesus. And I'm not cutting down. Don't, don't, don't read into what I'm saying. All, all, all I'm saying is I want more Jesus. That's all I'm saying. I want more of Christ in my life, in my world, in our world, as Bayside. I want more of Jesus. Look at the two things. Jesus Christ and him crucified. I want more of the person of Jesus Christ in my life. I want more relationship, intimate relationship, connection with Jesus as the true vine. I want it to be real and relational and life-giving. I want a spiritual intimacy with Christ like I have not had before. I need this. I want this. I want closeness with Jesus, relationship, 
abiding in the true vine of Christ. I want to seek him in prayer. Oh, I want my prayer life to be stirred up. Can I get an amen? Amen. I want my prayer life to be stirred up, my friends. I want my prayer life. I want to pray. I want to be a prayer. Not because it's about a spiritual religious activity, but because I want to seek Jesus. Prayer is communion with him. Intimacy, fellowship with the Father through the Son, Jesus. I want communion with Christ in 2015. And then it says, I also want to know nothing among you except Jesus crucified. I want to know the gospel. I want to live the gospel like I haven't lived the gospel before. I want to live death to Mark. Oh, do I even know what I'm saying when I say that? I want to live death to Mark. I want to live the gospel. I want to reflect the gospel. As Paul said, I want to die every day that I might live for Christ. See, more of Jesus is also more of him crucified. And that looks like I now receive the gospel and I live the gospel. You know, when we receive communion in just a few moments, I want you to consider that. Am I ready to live the gospel? Am I ready to die every day to to mark, to all things old mark, that I might live in newness of fellowship and relationship with Christ? I decided, 2016, we decided to know nothing among us. May we know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I have one more verse before we go to communion. It's Galatians chapter six. But far be it from me to boast. Gentlemen, stay in here though. Guys, don't go out quite yet. We all need this verse. (laughs) And this might be a while. (laughs) But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I want no Bayside pride. Can I get an amen? (laughs) Nothing. I want no haughtiness in me, in us, I want no boasting in anything except the cross. If I'm going to boast, if I'm going to brag, if I'm going to lift up, if I'm going to exalt anything, it is never going to be me. It is going to only be Jesus. I want to boast in nothing but the cross. Because outside of the cross, I am nothing. So I have nothing to boast about outside of the cross. The only thing that I have is because of the cross. Now the cross has made me complete and it's made me a son and it's made me, it's made me accepted and it's given me peace and it's given me purpose and it's given me all of life because of the cross and I think we'll talk more about that. But for today, outside of the cross, I am nothing so I will boast about nothing. But then look what he says. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I have been thinking about this verse for a while. What does that mean that the world is crucified to me and I'm crucified to the world? You know, I think that the world being crucified to me means this world has nothing of value for me. Nothing. 
Nothing. This world has no value to me. None. No value. This world is literally dead to me. It brings me nothing of deep value. The world and all that this world is is literally dead to me. Dead. It means nothing. It brings nothing. There is nothing of value that this world brings to me. And at the same time, I bring nothing of value to this world. I don't bring or add value to this culture. This culture means, brings nothing of value to me and I bring me nothing of value to the world. The world is dead to me and I am dead to it. The only thing I boast in is the cross. The only thing I bring is Jesus. All I have is the gospel and that is otherworldly. So what I bring is nothing. What I bring is Christ. In and of myself, this world means nothing to me, and I mean nothing to it. What do I boast in? I boast in the cross. What do I bring? I bring Jesus. I'm an ambassador of heaven. My goal is eternity. This world is is dead to me and I am dead to it and I believe with all of my heart as I find myself dead to the world and I find the world dead to me guess what I come to life I come to life I come alive spiritually when the world gets dead <laughs> I don't know if that's proper English. I don't care. <laughs> I come to life when the world gets dead. When I get dead, when the world gets dead, I am alive. And life gets worth living. And spiritually, I begin to come to life like a tree that is planted by streams of water. The best place for a tree to be. 2016, I want more Jesus, amen? amen? I want more Jesus. We are going to receive communion. Gentlemen, thanks for staying in for a little bit. You can go and get prepared. That's a good verse though, right guys? Yeah, okay. We're gonna receive communion and my encouragement would be as you receive communion, consider, consider, are you ready in 2016? Are you ready to say, I want to know nothing except Jesus and him crucified? Am I ready to literally let go of everything else? Am I ready for the world to be crucified to me and me to the world? Am I ready to be dead to that and that dead to me? Because when we receive communion, we are fellowshipping with the sufferings of Christ. We are remembering what he did and we are participating in that. So we are now participating in saying, as Christ did, now I am and I do. And so as we receive communion, I, don't, I would encourage you, don't take this lightly. Don't take this lightly, especially this morning. Are you prepared in 2016 to say, you know what, I'm going to know nothing except Jesus and him crucified. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like yet. And I will tell you, I don't either. I don't either. But I am ready to know nothing except Jesus and him crucified. And I am prepared to boast in nothing but the cross. And I am prepared for the world to be dead to me and me to the world. And as you receive communion, and as you take that bread, which is a symbol of the body of Christ, I want you to remember that Jesus 
It said on the night that he was having that last supper with his disciples, he took bread and he said, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. Do this consistently. Don't forget to remember my body. This was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me and participate in my body. And as you receive it, you are participating, you are receiving symbolically the body of Christ. And remember that. Consider Christ's crucifixion. Consider what he did on our behalf, allowing his body to be broken, taking all of our shame and our sin and our brokenness upon himself. And then consider, am I prepared to know nothing but Jesus? Am I prepared for the world to be dead to me and me dead to the world? Am I prepared for that? So as we prepare for communion, I would encourage you to let your mind go back and then consider this. So let's pray as we prepare. Heavenly Father, God, I'd like to thank you for who you are. Jesus, I'd like to thank you that it is all you, Christ. I thank you for this morning and I thank you for your love and your grace. Jesus, I thank you for your great sacrifice. I thank you, Jesus, that you allowed your body to be broken. I thank you that we can now participate in fellowship with that as we remember this morning. I just pray and I would ask that you would revive us again, bring us life again as we find ourselves dead to all things that used to define us and now alive in all things that you are, Jesus. I thank you. I praise you. Bless this time as we remember your body and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the gentleman will serve you and just hold the elements until everybody can serve. As I said, Jesus, on that, on that night, right before he would go to the cross, he was sitting having a meal with his disciples and he took bread and he broke the bread and he, he said, this is my body. And I want you to never forget, every time you break bread, whenever you break bread, remember my body. Remember the brokenness that I took on your behalf. Remember that I became your sin for you. Let's remember the body of Jesus together. <clears throat> Jesus, we also thank you and we praise you and we worship you today for your blood that was shed. We thank you that you willingly allowed yourself to give your life in your blood and we thank you for that and we praise you for the new life that we have because of your 
blood that was shed. Again, the crimson blood making us white as snow. And we praise you for your blood that was shed for us today. is a symbol, symbol of Jesus' blood, as we said, that was shed for us, and it was real blood, and it was agonizing, I'm sure, for him to shed that blood. At the same time, the blood was his life, and he gave his life for ours in exchange for ours, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's remember Jesus' blood together. Jesus, again, we thank you. Christ, we dedicate. We dedicate and give ourselves to you anew this year. We praise you, Jesus, that That you've called us out upon those waves. That you've called us to a place, Father, as individuals, but I believe mostly as a community, to step out of what is comfortable. Lord, I think we've all felt that in different ways. And so now we sit and we say, Jesus, we need you. We need you. More than maybe we've ever needed you before, we need you. Father, I pray that you'd continue to lead and guide us, and may we continue to know nothing, nothing but Jesus, you, and the gospel. So I thank you, I praise you, we dedicate this year to you and you alone, Christ, and it's in your name that we pray. Everybody said? We have a couple of ways um, to sort of apply both this year and then this week this idea of seeking Jesus more. One is we have this 2016 Bible reading study plan. Okay, this these are in the back at the Welcome Center. If you'd like to just read through, study through God's Word this year, we have these. Okay, they're a full sheet. They're on cardstock. You can. You can jump around if you'd like to, or you can read it just right in the chronological order. You can kind of read it however you like. But this is a good way if you'd like to study through all of God's Word in 2016. This is a great way to do that. The other thing we're going to try and have each week is we're going to try and have some practical challenges uh, for seeking and knowing uh, Jesus, the Word, ultimately, and for this week, and you can, these challenges will always be on the inside of your sermon notes, okay? This week, the challenge, and you can see this, is to read 
the Gospel of John, chapters 1 through 15, and find the seven I am statements of Jesus. In the first 15 chapters, Jesus makes seven very significant I am statements. He says, I am, and then he fills in the blank, seven very significant ones in these first 15 chapters. And so our challenge is to read those chapters, identify those seven I am statements, and then on the back of your sermon notes, there's a little chart here, so you can fill in what Jesus said, I am, and then the scripture reference uh, where it's found. And so, and then consider, probably the more important aspect of this is not only finding them, but then considering when Jesus said he was this, what did that mean? Start meditating on God's word in this way as well. So, so you have a couple different ways, even just for, for the year and then for this week, that you can um, apply this. I just want more Jesus. <laughs> did that come through? <laughs> if you want more Jesus, again, please give me amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Paul, lead us in a song. Stand with us if you would.